This is very obviously a geometry question, and maybe you have some vague memories of geometry and trigonometry that make you scared, but this is about as basic as it gets. So we're using cosine. We're probably going to want to use so toa, which is our mnemonic device for remembering what sine, cosine, and tangent are. Um, we should probably also draw a triangle, so that way we have a reference. It's very difficult to do these in our heads. So they tell us that angle J is the right angle. But for K and L, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to go this way. Now, cosine of K means adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent would be 24, and the hypotenuse would be 51. Right? So this is me just putting things where I'm told. Okay. What is the value of cosine of L? So there's a couple ways to think about this. I, I think that the, the way that most people are going to want to do it is they're going to want to know that extra side. Okay, so we can we can get it. We would just need to do Pythagorean theorem. So that would be 24 squared plus x squared is 51 squared. And because we have a calculator, this is not going to be a problem. So 24 squared is 576. 51 squared, 2601. And notice I'm using one of these little rinky-dink calculators. I know that Desmos has a calculator built in, but I find it very difficult to use when I'm doing normal kind of easy calculations. So I, I'd have on your test, I'd bring a real one so you can do it. So now we're going to subtract the 576 from both sides, 2601 minus 576, and that is x squared is 2025. Take the square root of each side, raised to the half power, and we get 45 is x. So now the rest is really easy. How do we find cosine of L? Well, the same thing we did with cosine of k, right? We do adjacent, which is the 45 side. So cosine of L is 45 over 51. And I believe that you can enter that. That's We have enough spaces in this, in this uh, uh, student produced response form that we can enter that. Um, you could put it in your calculator and turn it into a decimal. The problem is it's one of those messy decimals. See if I can, if the glare is going to do it. Yeah, okay. So it's one of those messy ones. And to be honest, I get very nervous about these on the SAT. They have rules. You'll see them when you do any of these questions. They have rules about how to enter these free response questions. But I think that they're confusing for anything that's got a messy decimal like this. So my advice is to just stick to the fraction. So we can enter it as 45 over 51, or uh, we can reduce that. Both of those are divisible by 3. So 45 divided by 3 is 15, and 51 divided by 3 is 17. So that might be the best way to do it. However, 45 or 51 is equivalent. You're not going to get points off for that. That That is the same value, so the SAT accepts it. Um, if you look at your answer key, it probably only gives you the 15 out of 17, 15 over 17, but it's equivalent. Um, some of you might rightly point out that this is one of those uh, kind of special triangles. Um, it's the uh, 17, this is our 15 side, and if we divide by 3 here, 8, 15, 17 is a special triangle. I don't know why anyone would have that memorized, but it gives me an opportunity to talk about the one that's way more important, that is, is more likely to come up in places. That is the 3, 4, 5 special right triangle. And remember, that means that all the multiples can work as well. So um, just something to keep in mind for other questions, but doesn't apply here. <laughs>